um, I will repeat that um, what we is being reported on the Israeli media is that there's been a second infiltration, some 70, it's estimated, some 70 militants from the Gaza Strip re-entering the south or entering the south of the country, re-entering some of the uh, small villages. Um, one of the kibbutzim they were at uh, during the previous infiltration, there were six sites that it's believed they were uh, targeting. At one of them, the IDF, the Israeli military, reports that it has um, managed to neutralise all the militants who came in. But there are other centres where there are still Gaza militants, fresh from this morning. Uh, and there are also un reports, I can't verify, that they may have taken hostages because not all the Israelis in these villages had yet left. So um, an unfolding situation and an ongoing story this morning. And there is, there is a huge amount of confusion, uh, of panic in Israel as people desperately trying to find out about what happened uh, to their loved ones over the past 48 hours. Yes, that's right. Uh, you know, for many people still this morning, they don't know if their loved ones are dead, uh, if they're wounded, or um, if they're prisoners, uh, hostages in Gaza. Uh, and that includes the parents of soldiers um, and the, the relatives of civilians. We've seen on footage coming out of um, Hamas on social media, we've seen a woman in her 80s being taken, that's someone's grandmother, and we've seen children as young as two and four. So um, there is an enormous amount of confusion. Parents have set up a parents group demanding answers. Israel has set up uh, a, a, a station where people can give DNA samples so they can exclude people who are wounded and people who are dead. There are so many dead and so many wounded and seriously wounded in Israeli hospitals. That's part of the reason for the confusion. But I think it's the horror of um, believing that your relatives or seeing your relatives taken hostage in Gaza that predominates for, um, for all these people. I've heard people saying they would rather have a terrible answer than this, this period of not knowing. And yesterday we heard from the Islamic Jihad leader a spokesperson in Gaza saying that they actually had 130 hostages. Not one of them was going to be returned, he said, until all the Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli jails are released. And there is, there is a lot of speculation uh, right now about the possibility of an Israeli ground offensive into Gaza. Yes, there is speculation. There's a huge call up. Uh, Israel's prime minister has said that the country regards this um, infiltration two days ago as a declaration of war and that Israel is now at war. Uh, Israel hasn't been at war since 1973 and he specified that this was going to be different. It's not just one more, um, not just one more exchange of fire between Hamas uh, and Israel at the Gaza Strip. This is a different order. I've seen people coming home, people who are of military age, returning home in large numbers to go to their battalions. So there is definitely a war feeling, a war footing. Uh, and when you're at war, then a ground offensive is part of your arsenal. There's no doubt about that. It's much discussed. Not, the politicians don't say so uh, openly, but it's much discussed in the Israeli media and I believe um, in the cabinet behind closed doors. And it was Israel uh, didn't see these attacks coming, certainly hasn't seen anything on this scale in decades. What's the atmosphere like where you are right now, Iris? It's a feeling of war. I don't know how else to put it. There is shock, uh, shock at the audacious and well-executed plan, which is now, um, there's growing evidence, was actually organised from Iran and, and equipment provided by Iran. We've heard that um, from Hamas itself. Uh, there's shock at that, at the military, um, I suppose ineptitude is the right word. There's a feeling that if they're at war, then people have to get behind this. So people are lining up for hours to donate blood, to donate goods. Um, in the streets of Tel Aviv, there are people organising donation tables. There's definitely a feeling of horror and shock. And I have to say one more thing, 700 dead. It's the deadliest one day total. I've been looking back, the, the largest I can find that comes near it is during the 1973 war 50 years ago, that was 347 in one day, and most of them were soldiers. Most of the people who died here were civilians, 260 of them attending a rave party. That's almost three times the number who died at the Bataclan in 2015. All of Paris remembers that to this day. 
So just that gives you a sense of what people here are feeling and dealing with. This huge death toll, most of them civilians, most of them mown down. Uh, and I think that puts the Israeli public on a war footing as well.